As we explain how to correctly disassemble an overhead traction machine, we'll use our standard 53 model in the demonstration. Remember to always think safety first when working on or around elevator equipment. Start by disconnecting the power. To disassemble the machine, begin by removing all the locating pins in the machine, except the one on top of the gear side of the shaft support block. These pins can be removed by placing a washer or spacer under the nut and tightening the nut to raise the pin. Now, remove the brake from the machine by loosening the centering and spring adjustment screws as you see here. Then remove the pins on both brake arms. Remove the four mounting bolts on the brake as shown here. Next, hoist the brake straight up over the drum. Now, remove the motor from the machine. Begin by removing the five coupling bolts from the brake drum and coupling. Remove the four motor mounting bolts on each leg of the motor. Before you remove the motor from the machine, mark and identify each of the shims on each leg of the motor for later reassembly. Now, hoist the motor from the bed plate. Then carefully place the shims aside so they can be replaced later. Now, drain the oil from the machine at the drain plug, located here, on the side of the lower housing. Then replace the plug. Your next step is to take the upper housing off the machine. Remove the four fastening bolts. Use a knife to break the silicone seal. At this time, we'd like to point out the position of the grease fitting. As a reference, this fitting is located parallel to the vent hole plug in the center assembly and is accessible through the inspection plate of the upper housing. This grease fitting should be lubricated once a year with number two EP bearing lubricant. To do this, remove the vent hole plug to relieve any pressure during lubrication. The next procedure is to remove the center assembly by removing eight mounting bolts, four on each side. When removing the center assembly, it is not necessary to remove the shaft support blocks. The set screws and the locating pin can remain in place in the shaft support blocks to assist in future realignment. Carefully remove the center assembly and be sure not to damage the gear. Mark each shim before you remove them from the lower housing and outboard stand so you can be sure to put them back in the same order for reassembly. Once the position of the shims has been marked, they can be placed aside for replacement during reassembly. You can now remove the outboard stand and lower housing by removing the mounting bolts and setting them aside. Lift the housings from the bed plate and the disassembly is complete. To reassemble the machine, begin by setting the lower housing onto the bed plate. Use the locating pins to help position the housing into the proper position. Once the lower housing is in its correct position, tighten the mounting bolts. Now, put the outboard stand into position on the bed plate. Put the mounting bolts loosely into position and use the locating pins to make sure the stand is aligned to its original position. Then, tighten the mounting bolts. We can now remount the motor. Use a clean cloth to make certain that there is no dirt on the bottom of the motor pads, the motor feet, and the face of the coupling. Now match the shims with the markings you have previously made. Put the shims back into their correct locations and lightly snug the bolts. Use the locating pins to help you put the motor in its proper position. Then remove them for the alignment procedure. It's now time to tram the motor. This is critical to prevent damage to the bearings during operation of the machine. Begin by installing two tram rods into the motor coupling. Pre-drilled and tapped holes are provided for this procedure. Place the tram rods into these holes, which are 180 degrees from each other. On one tram rod, put two dial indicators like you see here, one to read the face of the brake drum, the other to read the OD of the brake drum. The indicator on the OD of the brake drum indicates the height and side-to-side -side location of the motor. The indicator on the face of the brake drum will indicate whether the back of the motor is too high or too low and side-to-side -side in relation to the worm shaft. The goal is to have a reading on both indicators of zero, meaning that the motor shaft is in perfect operating alignment, both vertically and horizontally. Start by positioning the indicators on the side of the drum then set both indicators at zero. Using the other tram rod as a handle, rotate the coupling to the opposite side. With a soft hammer, 
Tap on the motor leg to bring the indicators to zero readings on both sides of the drum. This procedure will probably have to be performed several times to ensure a reading of zero to one half thousandth tolerance. When this side to side setting is satisfactory, then the motor shaft should be rotated 90 degrees to place indicators on top of the brake drum. The shims under the motor legs will have to either be removed or added to cause the OD indicator to have a reading of zero to a negative four thousandth. A negative reading indicates that the motor is actually four thousandth high of center. A positive reading indicates the motor is too low, which cannot be tolerated. The face indicator must read zero to a plus or minus of one and one half thousandth. The face indicator shows the height of the motor front to back. Once both indicators read within tolerance in all directions of the drum, tighten the mounting bolts of the motor on all legs. Then reposition the indicators as was previously done to make certain the motor did not move while you were tightening the bolts. If the indicators do not show correct readings, this means the motor did move and you must make adjustments to the shims to achieve proper tolerances. At this point, replace the locating pins and if necessary, ream the holes. Laminated shims are used under all motor legs and can be peeled apart in increments of two thousandths of an inch to achieve the exact tolerance required. When installing any machine, it's critical that the tram of the motor be checked to ensure smooth and safe operation. Once the motor is aligned with the brake drum, take the indicators off and remove the tram rods. Now, align the brake drum with the coupling by replacing the coupling bolts, taking care not to over tighten. Using a magnetic stand, put an indicator on the OD of the brake drum to make sure that the drum does not run out over one thousandth of an inch. Once you have tightened all the bolts, Rotate the drum very smoothly and make sure the dial indicator reads less than one thousandth of an inch. Make adjustments by tapping the brake drum with a soft hammer until you achieve the correct reading. Now put the center assembly back into the machine. Carefully lift the assembly into position. Match and place the shims and the shim plates with their previous markings on each side of the lower housing and outboard stand. Line up the shim plates under the bearing blocks and make sure the shims are squarely underneath the shim plate on each side. Then loosely insert the four mounting bolts on each side. Now push the locator pins in the shaft support blocks by hand. After final adjustments, they must be tapped in with a hammer. If a major adjustment is necessary, these pinholes must be reamed. You can now run the machine, but remember, you will still have to make adjustments to duplicate the pattern on the gear. We will now explain how to align the worm and the gear. To do this, you must attempt to simulate a load on the machine, which can be accomplished by applying pressure from a wooden beam against the OD of the rotating traction shiv. Or, with a helper, hold the traction shiv while wearing gloves and attempt to stop the shiv from turning. You can also use cables slipping in the grooves of the traction shiv to create a simulated load. Here you see the bluing on the gear teeth with a preset factory pattern which must be duplicated. It's extremely important to take note of the original factory pattern as this procedure may distort it. You should remove the locator pins so that you can move the shaft support block to duplicate the preset factory pattern. Apply bluing to the gear teeth adjacent to the original factory bluing. Then run the machine in both the up and down directions. At this point, you only need one bolt tightened on each side of the shaft support block. This allows you to make the necessary adjustments to achieve the correct pattern. When adjustments must be made, work with the up and down directions at the same time. If you have a right hand pattern in the up direction and a left hand pattern in the down direction, you must shift the gear axially through the bore of the shaft support blocks with a heavy soft hammer centering the gear over the worm. If you have a right hand pattern in the up and down directions, you must shift the shaft support blocks to the left. Do this by standing directly in front of the shaft support blocks and with a soft heavy hammer, hit the block towards the left. To make the pattern move to the right, hit the shaft support block towards the right. Reapply bluing to the gear teeth and run another simulation in both the up and down directions to see if the adjustments you made improve the contact pattern. Here you see a right center pattern in the down direction as well as in the up direction. 
This is an ideal pattern with only this simulated load on the machine. When an actual load is placed on the machine, a closer to center pattern should be expected. Now, tighten all the bolts, and to ensure accuracy, you must run a simulation again to make certain that the pattern was maintained after the bolts are tightened. Now it is time to measure the backlash. There are two ways to measure backlash. One method is to check the backlash between the worm and gear by positioning an indicator on the gear tooth as you see here. Then rock the traction shiv back and forth to determine the backlash. Normal backlash is approximately five to seven thousandths of an inch. The other way to measure backlash is to remove the cover of the inspection plate on the lower housing behind the oil level tube. Take a feeler gauge and place it between the worm and the gear. This should accept a gauge of approximately five to seven thousandths of an inch. Under each shaft support block, there's a set of laminated shims that can be peeled apart in increments of two thousandths of an inch to achieve the exact pattern and backlash required. In regards to replacement of the upper housing, Hollister Whitney has recently begun to seal the machine. Begin by installing the split seal around the center assembly. Tighten the small screw on the top of the seal, bringing the ends of the seal together. Now apply a small bead of silicone on top of the lower housing at each of the four inside corners nearest the shaft and the center. Place the gaskets on the lower housing. Then apply another small bead of silicone on top of the gaskets at these inside corners. Now carefully place the upper housing on top of the gaskets and smooth any overflow of silicone along the edge. Replace the bolts in the upper housing and tighten. Your last step is to place a bead of silicone around the OD of the seal and at the split of the seal and let it set for at least an hour before operating the machine. Note that when you receive a machine from Hollister Whitney, it has been thoroughly tested and run before it left our factory. But in shipping and handling, the motor and gear set can possibly become misaligned, which could require you to retram the motor and reset the gear pattern to ensure a smooth and efficient operation. Here you see a machine being tested in our facility with a vibration meter. For all these tests, we run the machine in both the up and down direction. We check the shaft support block horizontally and vertically on each end. We also check the rear end bearing both horizontally and vertically. The gear side of the shaft support block is tested as well as the motor. Should you have any questions regarding the maintenance and adjustment procedures we have demonstrated in this video, contact Hollister Whitney Elevator Corporation.